Hey guys, Shane from Liberty Under Attack here. I uh, just want to do a, uh, this be a little different video than what I usually do. Uh, but for those of you who are normal listeners of Liberty Under Attack Radio, uh, back in April, I think it was, April 26th, don't uh, quote me on that, I, I didn't look before I started this video, I think it was in a April 26th though, uh, we did a broadcast on depopulation and we touched on Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood quite a bit. And there was one quote that uh, I referenced there. Um, and it was uh, in regards to Margaret Sanger's desire to exterminate n the Negro population. And I kind of left it up to the listeners at that point because I could not find a source for it. But it was kind of propagated around the internet, so I said, you know, I'll leave it up to the listeners. If they want to do further research, if they can find actual documentation or evidence for it, then uh, I'll kind of leave it up to them. Uh, but when I was preparing for my uh, most recent article titled Outrage from the Left, the Defense of the Immoral, Inhumane Planned Parenthood, I came across a letter and wasn't expecting to. I'm not actually really sure how I found it, uh, but it's the first time I've ever seen it. And it's from smithlibraries.org. This is the, I'm going to be reading from the PDF, but this is the actual, um, you can see smithlibraries.org, digital files, original, and then a bunch of other uh, random letters and numbers. But uh, this is uh, archived on their website. Uh, preparing for this video, I decided, you know, let me check out and see uh, what's going on with this site here. Uh, apparently, you have to have access to uh, get on that server. So how I was able to get how I was able to grab that document, I'm not really sure. But all I know is uh, this is very very revealing. And now there will actually be uh, sourcing and citation. Uh, now we can debate the authenticity of it. I mean, obviously, there's um, I'm gonna say it's authentic. Uh, can't really get, tell you that for sure. But regardless, this looks pretty authentic to me. And uh, this is kind of the, I guess, the holy grail of, of, of that one quote that's kind of been left up to uh, <laughs> speculation for quite a while. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, read this letter to you, to all of you, and uh, also link in uh, the depopulation broadcast we did and also my most recent article discussing Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger. So uh, let us uh, go ahead and dive on in, why don't we? It's dated December 10th, 1939. Dear C.J. Gamble, 255 Adams Street, Milton, Massachusetts. Uh, Dear Dr. Gamble, it's good to know that you are recovering. I also am stepping up and have felt much better the past week. Miss Delp was here for Thanksgiving, and I am more than delighted to learn that she was able to get $250 from the California Birth Control Organization, plus the $600 from the Federation. That's good. She is a go-getter and a live wire, very tactful and charming as well. I think that my pick of her has been justified, even though she is a little higher priced than the ordinary. She has been working on the article to be written by Miriam Day Ford, uh, Mrs. Uh, Maynard Shipley, something's crossed out there, Maynard and Margaret Shipley. Uh, they were good enough to send me a rough draft for comments and suggestions, and the important suggestion that I made was not to include Miss Delp's actual name in the article because of the fact that her sister is married to one of the high spots in the Farm Security Department, and if the enemy started to work on her on her name, and they, they might make it difficult... Uh, difficult to diff difficult along the line. Otherwise, I think the article is good. As to my sending suggestions to the Federation, I think it is really unfair for me to do so. I am too far away to have the personal contact of the different reactions, and it only holds up any definite project to have the pros and cons battered about, which makes for more chaos and confusion. There is only one thing that I would like to be in touch with, and that is the Negro Project of the South, which, if the execution of the de details remain in Miss Rose's hands, my suggestions will not be confusing because she knows the way my mind works. Miss Rose sent me a copy of your letter of December 5th, and I note that you doubt it worthwhile to employ a full time Negro physician. It seems to me, from my expertise where I have been in North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas, that while the colored Negroes have great respect for white doctors, they can get closer to their own members and more or less lay their cards on the table, which means their ignorance, superstitions, and doubt. They do not do this with the white people, and if we can train the Negro doctor at the clinic, he can go among them with enthusiasm and with a knowledge which I believe will have far-reaching results among the colored people. His work, in my opinion, should be entirely with the, with the Negro profession in the, in the nurse, hospital, social workers, as well as the county's white doctors. His success will depend upon his personality and his training by us. The minister's work is also important, and also he should be trained, perhaps, by the Federation as to our ideals and the goal that we hope to reach. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. I agree with you that Miss, Miss Rose has done a remarkable job in thinking through and planning the project, but she has worked on it for some time. 
Uh, as soon as I knew there was a possibility of getting any money, I put her at work drafting the plan for Mr. Lackner. She is excellent at just doing such a job. She hangs on to details, weaves, and, cor and correlates them into the design. I shall never cease to have the utmost admiration and regard for her ability, and so far I have not seen anyone in the Federation who could take her place. I am constantly delighted at the thought that you are getting better, and now we must pray for Mrs. Timmy, who is seriously ill at the doctor's hospital in New York. My regards to you, Sarah, and to yourself. Sincerely yours, Margaret Sanger. Now, I do apologize for a couple of the stumbles there. Some of the spots on this letter are extremely light. I mean, it is from 1939 and it was scanned in. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, I mean, as, as far as the context of the letter and what was going on at that time, I, I, I can definitely see the, the authenticity here, and I hope you guys can too. And if you have any opinions on whether it's authentic or not, just feel free to let me know. I'm going to put, the, uh, put this document uh, also linked in the YouTube video as well. But uh, yeah, this is kind of this is quite the find, and uh, now there's actually a source and citation for that quote uh, that has uh, not been sourced for so long. So uh, I guess that's all for this video. I'll make sure to check out libertyunderattack.com. Uh, my newest article, "Outrage from the Left: The Immoral and Humane Defense of Planned Parenthood," and uh, make sure to tune in live every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time at fprnradio.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. See ya.